insulin resistance, which is basically synonymous with poor metabolic health, is at the root cause of most of the chronic disease that we see in this country. So that includes heart disease, that includes diabetes, that includes obesity, that includes Alzheimer's disease, which many physicians refer to as type three diabetes or diabetes of the brain. Many types of cancer appear to have their roots in metabolic disease and insulin resistance. And I think if we focused more on metabolic health and insulin resistance, we would go a long way towards improving people's overall health. What is the connection between insulin resistance and diabetes and cardiovascular disease, or is there a connection? Yes, there, there's a very strong connection. Uh, so insulin resistance, uh, just to take a step back, basically means that your body is not responding to insulin, the, which is a hormone. Uh, and so in order to get the desired effects from insulin, which is basically to lower your blood sugar, your body starts making more and more insulin because the cells aren't responding to it properly. Over time, your body may reach a point where it can no longer make enough insulin to get your blood sugar down. And that's when we become diabetic. We know, you know, I don't think anyone would argue with the data that having diabetes increases your risk of heart disease. Doesn't matter what your cholesterol is, doesn't matter what else you look at. Having diabetes, type 2 diabetes is what we're really talking about in this context, in your risk of heart disease. So I just want to underscore that for everybody listening, because I don't know that I've really heard it you know, presented that way. So diabetes increases your risk of heart disease. Yes. Um, what we also know the, you know, the flip side of that, I guess I'll say, is that, you know, there are many patients who develop heart disease who are not overtly diagnosed with being diabetic. Um, that may mean a couple of things, um, you know, but uh, it may just mean they haven't progressed far enough, or it may mean that, you know, people aren't looking at the right test. But when you go back and you look at insulin levels, and this, this study has been done, people with heart disease overwhelmingly have increased insulin levels or evidence of insulin resistance. So again, you know, this is sort of a progression and depending on when you look at that person, you might just see high insulin level with still a normal blood sugar level because, you know, the, your insulin resistance at that point but you're not so insulin resistant that the body can't keep up with the insulin production. And then you get to a point where now you have a high insulin level and you have a high sugar level because the body is no longer responding to that insulin. And then there's even a final point where the body just can't make insulin anymore. And it, you know, really starts to crash. Um, we don't check insulin levels on patients routinely. It is not a test that you know, most physicians are gonna order for people. We only check the blood sugar level, and then we test something called hemoglobin A1C, which gives us a three month average of the blood sugar level essentially. So when that patient who ultimately develops heart disease 10 years prior is at their physician and their blood glucose level is fine, and the physician said, you're fine, the reality is, is that they may have a very high insulin level and already be insulin resistant, but we don't detect that. And again, we have data that shows that the insulin level probably starts going up 10 years prior to the development of diabetes. Uh, so that's the link between insulin resistance, diabetes, heart disease. The other thing that I think uh, you know, plays into it is that insulin resistance either directly causes inflammation, or maybe it's better to say the things that cause insulin resistance also cause inflammation in the body, and that inflammation damages the blood vessels. And I think that's truly the start of the process that then leads to heart disease.
So are you saying that in insulin resistance and the inflammation it causes is the is what causes heart disease? I think it is essentially the root cause of heart disease. I think it is a much better, uh, I guess the way I'll put it is, I end up operating on a lot of patients that have a normal cholesterol level, a low cholesterol level. Some of those are because they're on medication. Some of those are just naturally, they have a low cholesterol level because of what they're eating or whatever it is, but I still end up operating on them. It is very rare that I end up operating on a patient that is not either overtly diabetic or insulin resistant, you know, when you test for it. And again, now that I know, I usually look for it. And if the patient's not overtly diabetic, I'll check an insulin level on them. Uh, but we actually have studies, you know, uh, you know, prior to the development of the statin medications and our focus on lowering cholesterol. One of the prevailing theories, as I said, was that sugar and insulin resistance is what led to heart disease. So they did a lot of these studies. And for instance, one study showed that if you look at all the patients coming in with heart attacks, over 90% of them are insulin resistant the patients that come to me, for instance, for heart surgery, and they say, well, I'm not diabetic. And I say, well, you know, if we look closely at your numbers uh, and we measure the right things, I can tell you that you're at least insulin resistant. If not, you know, di you know some of them are frankly diabetic and it just hasn't been detected uh, before that point.